Hi and welcome back to Minijack. Uh, in the last episode, uh, we built a homemade vectral, a dual vectral actually, uh, to control two resistors with the light of one LED, so applying one current and one voltage. Uh, today, I am going to build another vectral, a single vectral, to to give a voltage control to the distortion parameter of the Wimbridge oscillator but I am going to build a slightly different uh, vectral, a more efficient one uh, To start I am going to use a bigger LED, it's a 5mm LED instead of a 3mm and it's a white cold light and uh, transparent casing, so maximum light per, per current. The um, photoresistor that I am going to use is uh, slightly different from, from the others that I have been using. This one is uh, very flat on the top and you'll see why it will come in handy. And it's not always uh, easy to to know which resistors are flat and which are uh, kind of uh, with with this dome from the data sheets. Sometimes that is written that the photoresistive layer is uh, coated. That means that it has this kind of a blob of resin on on top. So if you don't want that, that's what you should look for. The first thing I'm going to do is to uh, send the the top of the of the LED to eliminate this uh, round part and make it flat. And I'm going to send more possible without damaging the the actual LED, so that it will match with our uh, flat resistor. And always be careful not to send too much because you're going to, to destroy the, the actual light emitting diode that's inside the, the resin. So just send less than you would and test the LED from time to time. So as you can see now the LED and the photoresistor match almost perfectly. And that's exactly what, what we want. So I position my two components on some um, protoboard and put a little bit of solder on the base just to, to keep them in place. And I also sanded the LED a bit on the bottom so that it can just be leveled perfectly with the, with the board. And as you can see the resistor is a bit bent and it makes a spring effect so that it is very very close to, to the LED and the spacing is always the standard integrated circuit so it can come in handy when, when you assemble your prototypes so uh, now I'm going to cut the protoboard and I smooth it out the, the angles and send it away all the excess protoboard and here it is ready for the oven like the other time I preheated my oven at uh, 100 uh, degrees Celsius a little bit of baking paper and straight on the rack and 20 minutes inside the oven non-ventilated Okay, so the basic setup that I have here is the here is the new vectral uh, which I put in place of the old uh, potentiometer that was controlling the distortion of the of the Wimbridge oscillator, uh, which is in turn uh, in place of a pull down resistor in the original circuit design, and this is just an attenuator for a control voltage. 
because this time I'm not feeding uh, the vectoral uh, potentiometer controlled voltage, but I'm using this other uh, LFO, which is a multimode LFO. And at the moment I am using the triangle wave uh, output. And basically we can see on this white LED what is going out. And okay, that is basically what we can hear. In this case, the, um, the LFO is acting as a, as a trigger. This is the, the usual potentiometer that is feeding uh, voltage to the double vectoral, so controlling the frequency. And you can hear that is not really a trigger when I use lower frequencies. You can hear this kind of waggle. On higher pitches, it acts more like a gate is more uh, steep. If I attenuate it too much, I can almost not hear any effect. Of course, this is just a prototype and needs uh, calibration. For, a se for example, we we will need to, to put uh, trimmers, uh, a parallel and a series on both potentiometers so that you can uh, calibrate the, the range and uh, just avoid those silence zones because here I have still some space to go with my pot with this setting but it's just mute. Same here. Okay, now I basically uh, changed this uh, potentiometer that was uh, a 10k with a 470k for the for the pitch. That meaning that we can go way lower with the with the pitch, and that's what we are getting. Actually, it works much better with uh, with lower pitches. here and actually this is uh, in my opinion a very interesting sound maybe hearing it uh, like that is not really you cannot really uh, grab it but for example uh, let's put I am putting in post-production some uh, reverb and 
changes the, the whole game because of course you don't usually uh, use uh, an oscillator like that without effect, at least I, I usually don't do it. There is always a, a switch spot, and of course, it's it's a chain work because this attenuator can, in turn, be uh, substituted by another vectoral and voltage controlled itself. I mean, while you use it, uh, ideas are just infinite. Every time you you play it, you feel the need for some new parameter that you want to automate or control. Also this sound is interesting with some uh, reverb. becomes almost a, a texture. Let's try it on a lower pitch. where it doesn't play anymore. With lower pitches is it's very narrow. But there's a very nice sound. can shift even more up with the uh, with my LFO almost in uh
And as you can see, the possibilities are almost infinite. Uh, another good idea would be to to play with uh, multiple LFOs uh, synced to the same clock. But at the moment, unfortunately, my breadboards are quite busy. I need to get something to, to the PCB. But maybe in the future, I, I will do something more elaborate and more complicated. But uh, yeah, that is basically it. And uh, I will upload on my blog the, the schematics of the, of the new wiring and if you want to try it and you have some opinions and questions about it, uh, just feel free to get back to me and I would really like to, to hear and to see if, if you make something similar or inspired to, to that. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.